Now faith does not give reality to the unseen things. It is loyalty to the unseen reality. For all things exist. If you only saw it, everything in eternity exists. Man exists. Man is part of the eternal structure of the universe. He doesn't grow out of a worm, as our evolutionists say. Evolution is confined to the affairs of man, not to the creation of God. Yes, I take a hoe, and then I turn from a hoe, digging a little lead with a hoe, into a tractor. And I will find something far better than the tractor. So I will swim across the ocean, or rather swim across a little river. And then I'll find a raft that will take me. Then I'll find a little boat that will take me. Then I'll put a sail on it, and that'll do better. Then I will take something more than the sail, and I'll find something with steam. Then I'll go beyond the steam, and I'll find nuclear energy. And then I simply, this is simply evolution in the affairs of man. So instead of walking across the continent, I now fly across the continent. That's evolution in the affairs of man. But there is no evolution in the creation of God. It still remains a theory, a marvelous theory, and we are all under compulsion to study it and, all right, to pass our lessons in evolution, as though the thing was proven. There isn't one single bit of evidence in the world to support the theory, the hypothesis of evolution. Not one. Yet, it's compulsory in all the universities of the world as though it had been proven. In the affairs of man, yes, but not in the creation of God. Man as he is, and all things as they are, they are eternal parts of the structure of the universe. Eternity exists, and all things in eternity, independent of creation, which was an act of mercy. So when God said, let us make man in our image, man existed. He didn't say, let us make something and call it man. Let us make man, man existed, in our image. And God became man. There's no way to make him in his image until God actually becomes man. So God became as we are, that we may be as he is. And he's not pretending that he's a man. He has to completely forget that he is God and lose all memory of his power that is God and take upon himself the weaknesses and the limitations of man. And in this he now is forming himself into his own likeness which is God. He is raising within himself that which he became Redeeming everything in this world that is the power that is God. Now, while we are here as men, you want to be, and you name it, you want to be successful in the world of Caesar, in dollars and cents, nothing wrong with it. You want to be a successful doctor, successful lawyer, success, I don't care what it is. You want to be, well then formulate in your mind's eye what it would be like if it were true. How would you see the world if you were now the man that you would like to be? See it in your mind's eye, and then yield yourself completely to the depth of your own being. How do I do that? Simply fall asleep in the assumption. I dare to assume that I am the man that at the moment reason denies, and then fall asleep in that assumption. Leaving it completely to the depth of my own being, to externalize it in my world. I will wake tomorrow morning under compulsion to do certain things which I had not formulated, I hadn't determined. I'll find I'll meet the right people. I'll do this, I'll do that, I'll do the other. And it all adds up towards the externalization of my assumption. Just as, as in his case, he now has a sign of God's favor. The depth of his own being responded to his abandonment. It's a complete self-abandonment.